Joe, come in, come in. Oh, good to see you. Find me home again. I only just got back today, actually. I've been, been off uh, for another little trip to the States. I was at a wonderful conference of the, uh, actually a publisher called Square Halo, who published my Lifting the Veil book. But uh, come away over here. Uh, still haven't really fully organised this, but here, uh, well, some up here as well, but mainly on this shelf and these shelves and that shelf, I've got my stuff not just from the Inklings, but also George MacDonald, who influenced them so deeply and is, in a sense, the great-grandfather of them all. And uh, MacDonald, people know uh, the novel Fantastics that Lewis read and loved so much and that he baptised his imagination and the extraordinary novel Lilith, which I think I've talked about. But I've talked about MacDonald a few times. In fact, we started off the very first time you came to this library when it was in the other house. I read you from England's Antiphon, his beautiful account of literature. But I was just drawing out, partly because I knew he had good things to say about this time of year, this is a really remarkable book and quite a rare book. The Diary of an Old Soul by George MacDonald. And um, I just love the way they produce books in those. There's lots of nice blank paper. And this is a lovely... Um, I love the way in these old books you, you get this little piece of tracing paper and then you can lift it off and it's protecting. There he is. And he really does. Oh, oh boy, my glasses on. It's a wonderful portrait. He really does look like a slightly raggedy old soul. This was a, a, a reprint and edition. This one came out in 1909. But of course, MacDonald, well, next year, 2024, will be the. Do you have a seat? Um, oh, I've got to turn around for you. Still unpacking things. Um, there you go. MacDonald was born, in fact, in 1824, so 1924 will be the bicentenary of his birth, and there'll be lots of really good George MacDonald things happening on both sides of the Atlantic, some of which I will have something to do with because I'm president of the George MacDonald Society. But this book, it's not quite a diary, as you might expect. It was a favourite book of Lewis's. But... Uh, You'll see there it says January, and then you open up, and what you get is a, a poem. You can read it as a continuous thing, but it's a reading of his poetry, a poem written specially for this purpose, for every day of the uh, year. But I thought I'd go to February. I was rereading it, because sometimes I've read it just like a long poem. I hadn't really paid attention to the dates. And now I'm really seeing how that works. And I'm particularly noticing that once you get into mid and late February, where we are now, MacDonald, to be frank, is writing about, about depression. He's writing about that downcast mind, that, <coughs> that sense of exhaustion, you know, what people, I think now sometimes call seasonally affected disorder, or sad as it's called, which is something I suffer from a bit. And, Many people do, and I, I crave the light. I long for the lengthening days. And there is what he calls a misty twilight of the soul, a sickly eclipse, low brooding or a man. It's beautiful writing. So I thought we'd just pick up, as it were, 25th of February and, and let it roll uh, and just take you to a little... It's just a few verses. Let's take you through to the end of February, and I wonder if if um, his words resonate with you at all. They certainly resonate with me. But I'll tell you this, MacDonald is one of the great givers of joy. He's a fantastic witness to the joy and the beauty and the sh resonance and absolutely reliable, steadfast love of God. And I find that witness all the more compelling because he tells me in his diary of an old soul that he also goes through these bleak patches. Um, so here's, we'll start from the 25th and it's just, each of these is just a little eight line verse. So there'll be time for us to hear from, from today, as it were, to the, to the end of um, the month. So 25. There is a misty twilight of the soul, 
a sickly eclipse, low brooding o'er a man, when the poor brain is as an empty bowl, and the thought spirit, weariful and one, turning from that which yet it loves the best, sinks moveless, with life poverty oppressed. Watch them, O Lord, thy feebly glimmering coal. <laughs> That's wonderful. I cannot think, this is number 26 now, I cannot think, in me is but a void. I have felt much and want to feel no more. My soul is hungry for some poor affair, some earthly nectar, gold not unalloyed. The little child that's happy to the core will leave his mother's lap, run down the stair, play with the servants. Is his mother annoyed? 27. I would not have it so. Weary and worn, why not to thee run straight and be at rest? Motherward. Just pause for a minute there. You notice that God here is figured as a mother. That's quite interesting, as he is as a great-grandmother in the princess books. And he's saying when we're low, we we go for second best. We We, 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 we kind of have a downward gradient of our likings, when really we should be going back to the source. Motherward, with toy anew or garment torn, the child that late forsook her changeless breast runs to home's heart, the heaven that's heavenliest. That's lovely, the heaven that's heavenliest. In joy or sorrow, feebleness or might, peace or commotion, be thou father, my delight. He's happy to move back and forth between those images. The last two now, 28. The thing I would say still comes forth with doubt and difference. Is it that thou shapes my ends? Or is it only the necessity of stubborn words that shift sluggish about warping my thought as it the sentence bends? Have thou a part in it, O Lord, and I shall say a truth, if not the thing I try. It's one of the greatest wordsmiths saying, I can't even get the words out. And then the final prayer for the last day of February. Gather my broken fragments to a whole, as these four quarters make a shining day, into thy basket for my golden bowl. Take up the things that I have cast away in vice or indolence, or unwise play. Let mine be a merry, all-receiving heart, but make it whole with light in every part. I think that's just a wonderful prayer for the disconsolate time of the year, and I take real comfort from it, so I hope you do too. Anyway, it's just a nice little visit. And this, this, uh, look, you can see all the deckled edges. It's just... There's something about books of this period, and there's all these wonderful ads at the back for his other book. Look, Fantastic's A Fairy Romance for Men and Women. The Fairy Tales of George MacDonald. Daily Readings. It's wonderful. And I'm sure it was just, I couldn't be tell you for certain, but I bet it was just this edition that uh, C.S. Lewis had his in, in his hands and, and kept so close. Anyway, it's lunch up.